Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. We're getting ready to send the, the coin mech, everything, uh, uh, the assembly piece. I'm gonna send this off to Tom Barnes. He does probably some of the best coin mech restorations I've ever seen. Uh, I'm gonna do this one for the, for the Vendo 81. But uh, we're gonna send this off, and uh, when we get it back, you will not believe what this thing's gonna look like. Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. We're back on the Vendo 81. Uh, gonna be working on the door, the coin door assembly. Uh, the, mach it, the machine is just looking beautiful. Really, really happy with where we're at right now. Uh, we got our chrome back. I think you saw that the other night. Uh, all our chrome uh, back from Speed and Sport. And thank them so much uh, for getting my stuff back to me. They're a very, very good group to work with. So on the bezel, probably one of the first things that I try to get in and if you've ever put one of these bezels in uh, to get that fitment into that housing, a little bit of a trick, a little bit of a trick. Uh, not all those housings are, are the same. So maybe the one that you get does not snap perfectly then. That is the old one. So that's kind of where we want to be at. And I'm going to show you how to trim fit this uh, in there so it'll snap into that housing really good. This one right now is like super, super tight. So I'm gonna show you where I do some trimming. And you don't want it really loose. You want it, I mean, really to fit tight. So when you get it, uh, I usually take, and if anybody's got a better idea on this, I, I will take it. I've used sandpaper in there. It seems like the best that I've had is taking this and going across that edge. And I've just got a kind of a razor blade knife here, nothing fancy, but go across there. And as you see, we're taking off a little bit at a time. <sighs> Be very cautious. Do not slip across there and get onto the face of this or you're gonna be doing a little bit of sanding and cleaning up, trying to get that scratch out of there. You want this to get as flat across in this housing area, as flat as you can get it. It needs to pop into there. If it's hung out a little bit, it will cause you troubles down the road. And that right there is about the best I've had it right there. So if you see this sticking up, see if I can get this on video. If you see it sticking up right in one of these areas here, you need to get that down. Get it down all the way. It needs to pop in just like that. And get it, there's a little bit of a curvature on this, so you'll have to kind of watch that. But uh, that's why it's supposed to be in there, as you see. Sometimes you'll get one that's really loose. You'll have to put some tape on the back. This one here is not going to need it. Uh, I'd have to probably tap it out to get it out of there. So looks really good. So second part, you'll have a, the coin release piece that goes in. You'll turn that around. Make sure when you put this in, the stem piece needs to be in the, in the down position. And this piece here is what is going to be going against the coin rejector. So that is, that'll be your adjustment, but this will bolt up right on the back there. Get that pretty squared up when you're doing it. Okay, so that should work like that. The chrome just really come out good. Okay, when you get ready to install this cover plate, you've got your, your bent coin release that uh, will be on the outside. So remember that. You're gonna lay this piece down, tuck this one underneath. Make sure it's not upside down when you do it. Take your spring 
and you're gonna hook it. This little spring goes through this hole and it's gotta go into that little hole right there. Get that hooked in like, I can get it hooked myself here. There we go. Hook it in just like that. You're gonna lay it down on the flat. So hook it on the hook first. You're gonna let that piece flip through the hole with the spring already attached, you got it loose, then lay it on your bezel, get your holes lined up, and then line your hole up in the screw hole that's gotta attach this bracket to your drop, which is right there. And then put the screw back in, like so. And you can tighten this all the way down. It will, you wanna get it good and snug. Obviously we don't have the whole bezel tightened down yet. We're gonna do them next. You'll have these little caps and I've kind of cleaned these up just so they look really nice. We'll put uh, all six of those on right now. The screws that go into this pot metal, you will always see, and these are shorties. Make sure you don't get anything long. These are real short and they got this cutaway in there. That helps cut into the pot metal that's already got a, a thread there. And that's what pulls this all together. There's the three, there's three more here. Remember when you do the three on the, on the top, you've got another piece. I call it the little bumper gasket that goes across the top and it will sit in there just like that. So let's flip this over. Let's see how everything looks. We'll go to the bezels right now. Just remember the top is the bigger swoop is to the top. I always take, take you a little bit of tape. I've done it this way so many times. It's just the only way I've ever done it. But I'm sure there's somebody who's got a better way, but. If you can grab it and it wiggles, you don't got it tight enough. That feels pretty good. Put the bottle opener in. Let's go on to the next bezel coin return area. There is a kind of a U shape. You'll see two rounded corners, two square corners. The two square corners obviously go to the bottom, the two roundies at the top. And I'm gonna do this one without the rag so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Everything on the front is pretty well done. We're gonna come back. We will start on the lock bar. If you've never put a lock in before, almost every one of these machines, pretty well the same lock. So you have to take it apart, get this nut piece off. And what you should have in your hands is basically something like that. So when you got it like that, the stop is over here to this side. So when you get your key out, comes out just like that so we're gonna pop this in and if you've done like I have they will go in a little bit tight due to the clear coat make sure I got my key in there the way I want it next items got to go in I call it the lock rings what holds actually the key assembly in snug it up pretty tight one thing about covering some of those pliers uh, with it, and you can use a big socket on this but if you've got your if you've got these already covered in your piece, you can actually use this to do a lot of your work, protects from scratching any of your stuff. I've been using fluid film. Just, it's just a slight hit. Don't take much. Only one way will go in there. You can probably force it the other way, but it's not gonna work right. So get the lock in there, bar popped in there. If there's a, if there is a little bit of a clear coat in there, work that bar right now before you do anything else. Hold your lock in. I like to have that key in the down position. 
whenever I'm setting everything up. So pull your bar back, keep your key in the position, in the down position, so it's pointing down. You'll have a lock, your stop, I should call it, a little stop mechanism. The cam, I've always found it needs to be to the high side, stick, sticking uh, out to this outer edge of the coin door. It needs to come to the outer edge. So get that lined up. I want that on the outer edge, just like that. Always keep a firm pressure on your key so all this doesn't fall apart on you while you're trying to put this together. And once you get this last screw in, boom, you should be home free. So, Work that cam just like that. Cam's to the high side right now. You should be able to pull the key out. It should be in the down position. Pop the key in, turn it. You can turn it a full turn and you can watch this. You know, this lock mechanism barely moves, barely a quarter. It's all you need, all you need. Get your two Carter pins in. There we go. Okay, we're in there. We're in there. We'll tap our threads right quick. Get this top one in. You'll see a big slot on, on most of the coin doors where you've got some height adjustment. And you'll see we'll be making some some adjustments uh, when the coin mech gets back for fitment. Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Coming into home stretch, doing the selection door today. Uh, this particular set of glass and plastic and the gasket. I got from Funtronics. I believe so Soda Jerk Works probably has the same items too. First thing I always do is to make sure everything is clean as possible. When you're doing this, the glass needs to be the piece that goes on the outside of the door, not on the inside. Your plastic, your big plastic piece will go uh, on the inside. So you can see this, you're gonna have a long piece, a, a wider piece, and then a narrow piece. The wider piece is gonna go on the plastic side. Make sure your rail is on the, the fat side, the, the fatter side is on the plastic side. So get that started first, lay that in there. And then your next piece will be your gasket. Go ahead and pop this uh, last rail in and get it set up. You can feed this through to the bottom side, just like so. And I don't have it pushed totally together right now, so it should go in fairly nicely. Just like that. And you should have two caps that'll go on the end. So pick your piece up, try to hold on to all pieces at the same time. And then we're gonna try to drop this in. We're back in there together. So once you put the screws on the side, don't forget on the inside, you gotta get your frame rail on there at the same time. Wow, so much difference in uh, what that looks like with brand new stuff. And we're gonna try to put the top one in. I usually put it on a rag just in case something might be sitting on something. So set a rag there where it kind of stays in one position. If you can hold that finger at the top and get your 
screwdriver pushing against Getting that first one in is always a trick. And of course you're gonna have some adjustments, but once you get that first one in, you're usually home free. Once again, pull the door out just a little bit. Get your top screw started. First scratch you're gonna put on when you're going back together is gonna be on these screws right here. So be careful when you're coming back together as you see they're clearing. And as you see, we're too tight and that is sticking out. So we're gonna back it off just a little bit. So right now, if you look at the slots, I'm about, I'm gonna change this one. There's a little bit of a slot left. I don't know if you can see that right there a little bit of slot left on that side we're going to pull it out just a little bit so make sure when you get that hinge put on make sure that is laying flat across there right flat across there if not if that hinge does not come back across or really nice and it's hanging out a little bit, that door will not close properly. So that's something to watch for getting ready to take one apart and uh, had a little issue with this door. I think I fixed it. We're getting ready to find out. So going back, you want that door, you let go of it, it needs to shut on its own. You shouldn't have to push it in. It should be a flat push. There's a, a little bit we're going to do, a little hinge change there. But that's the way that should shut, just like that. Today, we're going to get the coin mech. We just got it back. Uh, it looks beautiful. I just unpacked it a little bit, see what we've got. But uh, we sent this off. I don't know if you saw the video on that prior video but I gotta show you this because it's just beautiful kind of like Christmas get to unwrap some of this stuff now what do you think of that hopefully video can show how this thing I mean it's just beautiful sent this to mr barnes uh he's got the it's called the coin drop shop i'm gonna make sure i get this right uh he's in scottsdale arizona uh i sent this to him um it just looks beautiful i've i've used him several times uh he's got me out of a bind on some things i if you want to send some things in and just get them cleaned up uh, he does it that way, and then if you want to do the full anodizing where he tears everything down, wow, this beautiful. Uh, we're going to do a little the install on this right now. When you do the install, you're going to have two, uh, two pieces here you need to drop down to get your, your exchanger out of there. Yes, that was my knees popping, <laughs> unfortunately. I usually like tight, I don't like using the, the electric. I like to use a screwdriver when I tighten these down, so I really know where it's at. You can tighten those. I never see anybody strip one out, but that's what happened, I guess. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a couple of the other pieces on while we're here. Uh, we'll leave the things. Vendo didn't. If you had a machine that sat outside and there's electric wire that went down here and it had a little, uh, just a little coil basically that kept some heat in there. I don't put those back in. I think they're kind of a, maybe a fire hazard. I never had one catch on fire or anything, but uh, probably what I'll do 
right now the original plug that goes in there but to kind of give you an idea and i'll probably end up doing this but you can stick this back in there and at least kind of cleans that hole up uh just kind of covers that insulation but that would be a, a suggestion uh, that i would do and i'm pretty sure you can buy those new for now we'll get this put on there so we can get our coin mechanism working so if you've got a exchanger and when i say it's got an exchanger on it there'll be a row here where you got a nickel exchanger so i have not personally run anything uh, through the through the rejector yet to see how it's all set up but uh, when you're setting your flag system up this long arm if you'll look down here at the bottom when you got that full of nickels it's going to kick that arm out like that not a lot of change but enough to raise that flag that says use correct change or not uh, i've got two other machines with the large coin mech i got a 110 over there it's got the flag but there's no arm here so probably what vendo did they put this they put this flag system in if you had it or not and if it didn't have that arm there it's just going to hang down and it's going to say use correct change only so if they stuck their money in there and uh, let's say it was set up for a nickel and they stick a dime in uh, they're not going to get any change it'll probably take their money and so they're only going to get uh, one coke out of there so when you set your flag system up you'll uh, see a little piece that that arm goes into so you want to stick this arm through this little cup area kind of cupped out there stick that through there okay so it should flop like that and if you want to grab your nickel you'll see that it'll have just a little bit of a lift you can actually control it by this arm right here and you're not going to see much movement and you may have to bend that so when you have your window over here and you're looking at it okay so a little bit of a change just like that that's all you need one of the last pieces you can put in um obviously we've got to get our lock system put in i usually don't like getting everything in there but uh for time process you see this thing come together wow that is looking looking good looking good the flag system will be set up we still have a cover piece yet that goes on here and obviously our crank so let's try to get our our door mechanism set up right now You'll have two locks, lock pins on this. And always remember when you're putting these on, this will go, your slots will always be in the downward position. All right, let's see how it does now. There we go in the correct position and open now we're going to put the crank assembly on and I know at this point in time in the series uh, we lost valuable footage my apologies uh, we thought we had that saved on the cloud and uh, we got to the beginning of this uh, 81 and we lost uh, a good probably two to three hours of footage. Uh, man, I'm just sick. Your crank assembly will uh, have a pin that goes down through like so. Just like that. There'll be a cover plate and I'll show you that. You'll have a cover plate that go over the over all that, we've got to get that painted, uh, something I missed in some of my paint applications. We'll get that painted tonight. 
So, this machine, nickel, dime, and a quarter. It's set up on 10 cents. So we're gonna, we're gonna just run a few coins through here, see how it runs. Oh yeah, that feels great. It has a nickel slot. You'll fill the nickel slot and once you get that nickel slot full enough, or once it gets full enough, that arm will push that up to where deposit correct change only, use uh, correct change only. So I don't have enough nickels tonight. I, I do have about four or five in there right now. Still not high enough in the cylinder to flip the flag. But I do have a couple of quarters here. We're gonna pop those through. And let's we'll see how many. Look at there. Tommy did a great job on this mech. Unbelievable. Runs like a brand new one. Looks like a brand new one. Probably better than a brand new one. But uh, coin mech is ready to go. Let's uh, go to the inside where the shaft is at. So on the inside, you will need to hook up with a little pin, similar to the pin you did on the crank assembly. And you're gonna see a little pin housing right there. And I just stuck this in there to kind of hold it in place. Let me grab something to get it out of there. So you'll take that pin out. There we go. All right, so that pin's gonna come through the through the side, you're gonna line this up. This has got to fit in an angle into that slot. It's actually set like perfect right now because I didn't change it too much when I took it apart. When you're doing it blind, you can't see the hole. Oh, there it goes. Now, once you kind of hit the hole, then you can grab your, your pliers or whatever you want to tap it in with. It is tight. There we go. You should have a cover plate. Remember not to over tighten this. Once you got it, you'll probably never get back in here. This is the adjustment hole. Actually there's two. This connects it to the to the crankshaft, basically. There's really no much not much adjustment there. Your adjustment hole is this one down here. And when I take those apart, I try to leave them alone because they're probably were set pretty good, probably even from the factory. And then you got your bottom piece here. That goes down here. All right. So inner door is pretty complete. We will probably let's um, let's go to our shelves. Man. Powder coating has got to be the best thing, especially if you want, you know, you can paint these, they do all right, but the best thing you can do is put your, uh, put your money into powder coating, especially on the inner cabinets. Uh, just tough to beat a good product. So let me uh, show you how these wheels go together. Very simple. You will drill these out originally. You can get these, uh, it's like a, a rivet housing that's got a screw in the middle of it. And that baby works just like it did brand new. I'm not gonna do all these live on there on, on our uh, video page, just keep the, our stuff, but uh, we'll do a couple here. Basically, you got your your rivet. I call it a rivet. It's like a it's got a threaded base on it. I'm getting these from Funtronics. I called Janet and I said, "Hey, I've tried to powder coat our stuff and try to leave these wheels on. It doesn't work out very good. If your powder coater is getting any heat to these at all, which he should be." Uh, it, it does put a, it, it melts them pretty good. 
just to the point really they're kind of still there they tape them off but it just gets too much heat and that's why you want those to work right there they kind of uh leave a little bit of space so they do free will so literally you can have a set of these on in about 10 minutes your sliders pop in pretty easy just drop them in into the slot they're in grab your spring show you here there's a spot you got a notch right here you'll go down you'll go around the the wheel and you'll come back in and the other piece of string here so if you see your little spot right here take that tab and just push it back a little bit get your spring we'll start it at the base I like flipping them from the bottom in. We'll see if we can get it right here. There we go. So, now you got your guide pulling your bottles back down the way it should. Let's stick that back in the, to the housing here. Put our first bottle in there. And depending on what, what bottles you're using, we're gonna go all the way to the, where that bottle is barely clear. I think we can use, yeah, here we'll use that one. So you're gonna see the bottle hit about there. And boom, it's gonna stay, stay right where it's supposed to be. So that gives you an idea how to do the shells. So when you're doing the, the wiring for the light, uh, you will have a separate wire that comes from here make sure when you uh trying to figure out your length have the door wide open that's going to be the longest length then in your harness you should have two spades coming out the, the side of the junction box so we're going to clip these off some people do put a uh, little slip on so they can take it apart i always I don't trust them that much. I usually just go ahead and do a regular electrical butt connector on it because I've had them come apart and, and then they don't work. So get you enough wire, they're stripped off. There we go. I use uh, a heat shrink butt connector. There we go. So those are together. At this point, we could go ahead and fire it up and uh, just check our light right quick. You should hear your upper fan motor kick on at this point. If you got this turned off, compressor should not be coming on. So let's check our light right quick. And we do have light. So we're good there. Put a little knob on here. There we go. All right. Things looking good here. Uh, next step, uh, let's get our cover piece put in here and then we'll kind of clean up our wiring we can go ahead and shut it down now cover piece that goes on right here it will uh, cover up your wires I'm run it through the buffer right quick if you haven't seen this product I used it on the Vendo 39 Kind of my first machine that I did any demos on. You're going to tear off a little piece. This is way too big for this, but for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and do it. But uh, Vivid Restore. Uh, got this on Amazon right now. Uh, $19.95. Uh, free shipping if you got uh, Prime. But you're going to see... A big difference in your gloss 
it works the best. I, I did a, if you're on my Soda Time uh, page, there is a video I did a Harley. A friend of mine, a lady pulled out in front of him and wrecked his bike. And I told him when he got ready to, when he got pretty close to bringing it back on the road to bring it over. And I got to use the first time with the product on his bike and man, it, it shows some unbelievable results, but I'll try to show you, you know, there's areas you can't get into with a buffer. And that's why I really like this product. As you'll see, it'll start bringing some, a little bit of black off. Stainless, chrome, brass, pot metal. I've used it on about everything. Let's buff this off here, see what she did, looks like. Oh yeah, you can bring it to life. But, let's see if I can get some good angles there, but yeah, it, it does really good. Get your plate and use some, uh, I call it plumber's putty. You're gonna need, uh, you wanna cover, you wanna get that cavity in the back here, pretty well covered. So we're gonna put a, a pretty good mount on the back side here. But you wanna cover this whole cavity up so when the wires come through here, it doesn't let any air out. Perfect. So now everything, and you kind of feel on this back side, and you can tell if you've got everything sealed off really good where those wires pass through. You don't necessarily need it down here, but you need it up here where your where your airtightness is at. You can get this about any home improvement, Lowe's, any of those, but I kind of use this as a as a wrap piece, and I will stick that up through there i'll probably be back in my screws off there i'll bring this across but i'm going to try see if i can get this all the way through to the back side here so if you buy the the split tubing insulation tubing uh, you'll have some tape that you can do. And I'm gonna pull the first piece off here and uh, kind of helps you hold all this together. So we'll pull it off right now. And it's kind of comes off pretty easy. Once it comes off, it does stick. Looking good, looking good. Well, we got the compressor running last night, sitting there running between uh, 33 and 45 degrees right now. Sounds really good. Got this cover plate in there that we've got to put on. Probably the funner part of doing machines is coming to the end ending process. Everything is coming together really good. Like that. So if you never put a crank handle on, you will see a pin that slips through, goes through the handle, just like so. And that's what's gonna lock this on, so. There we go. 
So then you grab your crank handle and it should come over and lock right there. That's where it should be locked in at. Obviously when you shut the door, you're gonna have to bring it back the other way. need to get some wafers to put in there but you're gonna have a drain pan like this it's gonna hook into the vents over here on the side and your wafers will go in there great design I had this powder coated it come out beautiful very very nice uh, should last a long time I even powder coated the little rail system get that in there where the drain will drop right in there and we'll do the loading instructions right now. There you go. Loading instructions. The loading instructions, uh, it'll show for the 81 and the 110 just shows the difference in the size of the bottles but uh, kind of has a maintenance and care piece on there kind of cool work on the exterior decal so on the Vendo 81 as far as correctness I think and I could be wrong I kind of like this decal the best this particular machine was in June of 1957 but I try to center it between these two, not the overall machine, in between these, these the, the main base of the cabinet. And when you're pulling your vinyl off, be cautious. Always do it in an angle. Especially on the, like the, the smaller letters, sometimes they'll, they'll peel off on you. Just make sure this stays straight and straight across up and just go straight up work your each letter really good do it in an angle be cautious look at your each edge watch each edge keep it going and there you go yeah, that's looking good. Boom. Everything should feel good. We're coming to completion here. We'll put the foil on next. Pretty easy to do. Just got to line it up into the, into the housing. All right. I tend to always do the top to the bottom. This is like a perfect fit, so you've got to hit those grooves just right. Left to right, top to bottom. Much like that. Your insert coin. We'll have protective film on there. Get that off there. Insert coin, same thing. Get it centered really good. Like so. Use correct change only. It's a long, kind of a long decal. Like so. Use correct change only. Good looking decal. I always like putting the, the compressor one on. I usually hang it off the bottom. One of the main tubes there. That's the way the factory did it. I like to duplicate that. Something like that. Okay, we'll do the next ones here the coin return and bottle opener 
I kind of like this style here. Um, you can get it several different ways. like that that is looking really really good probably one of the best 81s i've ever done i know i probably say that every time a couple of things we have left to do we've got to put the chrome trim on the bottom all right we're gonna do a final polish we kind of did a quick little buff i'm gonna do the final polish with the uh, vivid restore All right, let me get some some screws and we'll put this together. All right, you got uh, four screws to put your kick plate on. That really dresses out the machine really nice. One thing I did miss, there's a patent notice. Goes on the inside kind of unique seven of 57 uh, this machine was actually made in June I believe June of 1957 so um, always kind of nice to get a patent notice that's just right there pretty close That is pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, let's put on our last decal. Probably uh, this one can go either way. On the D series, I'm gonna put them on. Uh, just a little Coke arrows. Uh, the you know, Coca-Cola in the time was probably wondering why are we putting other vendors in? So they're gonna put these top selections and the Coca-Cola labels. So Coke got put in here. Obviously they put a divider in the, in the door and then they put the other vendors in the bottom. So we're gonna finish off. If you've never done water release before, get you a little cup of water. Usually if you can grab that and you can start sliding it, it's ready. So leave it in the water. Okay. So, if you can see the decal moving around like that, then you know you're ready. And you'll just drape those on there with the arrow pointing up. I've got this little cold in here because it is running right now. But just kind of a little arrow pointing up. Let that set up there just like that. You can dab it with a rag. Watch it when you do it, because it will move around. Just dab it a little bit. If you don't like your angle, this is the time to change it. But something like that. See if you're seeing that all right. And there you go. If you follow very many of my machines, you can probably buy brand new ones of these. But this thing has stood the test of time. And I'm putting it back on this machine. It doesn't look very good. But let me tell you what. How many times you got a machine, June of 1957, uh, you'll see on my machines, I always try to put the original ID plate back on. So that's going to be one of the last things we're getting ready to put on here. Be very cautious when you're doing this. You don't slip off. 
your painter would not be very happy with you. There we go. Wow. It's always great to put those last ending things on a machine. Just incredible. The Vendo 81 series has been great. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you just now got started on a, this series, uh, go back. I'm not for sure how many's in this series, but uh, this machine had quite a progress, uh, quite a start actually. Uh, we ended up losing uh, all the teardown video. My apologies. I had no idea when I was taking them off my phone that it was taken off the cloud. So my apologies on that. On our next series, uh, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen again. But thanks for staying with us. I will see you in the next one. The next one will be the finale. We'll cover everything on the machine. But thanks a lot, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.